You already know, niggas. I already been proven that the food that they serve in public Woo. school, if not at the same level of prison food. and jail food, and just right above dog food. School is really a daycare system for parents. Teach. That's why they say, "Ooh, I can't wait for y'all to go back to school." Ooh, I Ooh, I'm sorry, but God damn, he cooking. All right, we back, and I know a lot of people who reacted to this particular video they were going strictly for when charleston white decided to back the blicky out when he was talking to dju and all of that and i get it that's entertaining and all that other nonsense but let's get to the powerful conversation that these two young brothers have uh i'll post it right now i gave a big shout out to dju uh gave him just some words of inspiration because i don't think a lot of young men who come from the area that dju comes from gets enough push i don't think they get enough uh acknowledgement I don't think they get enough drive from everybody else telling them that what they're doing is the right thing. So let's get into this. Like, subscribe, comment. Let's go. DJ, you go crazy. What is it about the black male that society fears the most? Because obviously society still fears the black male. Well, they fear his retribution, homie. They fear that one day the black man is going to me. They fear one because they see a nigga when he see, they already, the white woman and I already told a nigga how the basketball is. They already see how the big nigga is with a white girl in a flick. They already see how the big black do in the flick. So this is what they're afraid of, homie. They ain't afraid of you niggas. They already know you don't have no, 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 no. You don't have enough hate in your heart to kill white people. Mm. They're just afraid you're going to rip and take and bully. Like you do when you're at the mall. And what's odd is uh, Farrakhan said this a long time ago that the biggest fear is actually that black people will come into power and do the same thing to white people that white people have done to black people. Little do they know, black people don't really have it in their heart to be that kind of violent to other people. I don't know why we have it in us or how we were brainwashed so badly to want to do bad to each other only, but it seems like that's all we want to do because if, if they wanted that kind of smoke, if we wanted those kind of problems, we have the money, we have everything that we need to be able to retaliate and we never did because I don't think it's in us and I don't think that we want to. So I think it's an unnecessary fear if it is a fear. Turn it, white man. Like you do them when they buy themselves at the bus, that's what they're afraid of. They're not, they wasn't afraid of your ancestors, really. They was afraid more of themselves than what they had done. Mm. But this group of white people are not afraid of black people because we're tougher. It's, all, it's already been proven when the white boy go learn UFC fighting skills that he can beat the black man. They showed her that when we took Kimbo Slice and put him over there. They already showed. They showed her that with Deontay Wilder, with that other big Russian white boy. Uh oh. Whatever the fuck he is. So they already showing us we're not afraid of you guys. We're afraid of what's in your hearts because we believe if you guys ever get in power, you're so hateful hearted that you would be like the white slave masters. Mm -hmm. Remember the white men come in and take a black girl and take her away and they go brutally rape her for hours. Remember the white man come get little Emmett Till because he whistled at a white woman and two white men went and tortured him and beat him till he was. Which turned out to be a complete lie. And when the woman came out and admitted that it was a pure lie, nothing still happened. Things like that bother me more than anything. Like sometimes we see the police brutality videos and all of that and you see niggas just doing wild shit like the dude who decided to jump out the car run through a dark area start reaching around his waist police lit his ass up and i'm supposed to sit here and protest over people doing dumb shit but the cases like emmett till is the ones that that truly bother me because those are clear cases of clear cases of racism uh, that's what they're afraid of that black people are like that now and they are they're not afraid of that you'll take over the banking system. You're not smart enough. Mm. They're not afraid that you'll take over the airports. You're not smart enough. Mm. They're afraid of your retribution of what's in your heart. You believe you've been done wrong, and you've never been done wrong by white people. Your parents done you wrong. Ooh, teach. Your parents. Cook the condition trust. that they birth you in mm. done you wrong. So when you say we haven't been done wrong by white people, mm -mm. instead we've been done wrong by our parents, mm -hmm. can you elaborate on that part, please? Uh, where did you learn to read? 
man, just listen to DJ U. Like, coming from, like, he makes me proud, man, coming from the area that he came from to want to wanna ask these questions. Because he could ask about all the shit. Bruh. He could interview about all the shit and negativity and drill music and all of that. He's trying to get answers as to how black people can fix themselves. And I think that's so fucking dope of him. So shout out to DJ U. Did, did, were, were you a kid when you got to the white boy public school system and the teacher said, who know how to read in, in kindergarten? Did you raise uh -huh. your hand and say, I know how to read? Or did the white school system teach you how to read? Who taught you how to do math and uh -oh. division and subtraction? Was it uh -oh. the white school system that the white man creates for the public school system? Uh -oh. Or was it your black Negro parents? Uh -oh. Where were you educated in? Mm. Because your ancestors couldn't, they, the white boy would not educate him. Mm. How is it that you've been educated by this white man's school system? A, B, C, who taught you that? Who taught you what you know past what you know? Was it your white school system or was it your white boy's prison system? The books that he allow, the books that he allow to circulate in his prison system. Mm -hmm. Because when he get mad, he takes certain books out of circulation. Yes, Behold the pale white horse. Um, uh, the black man had to eat by Elijah Muhammad. Um, there, there's a ton of truly black power and inspirational books that we have that are completely banned out of the prison system. And I know I've been in the prison system multiple times. What? There are certain books that they will not allow people to read because they know that it will wake them up. It knows it will get them to begin questioning things, beginning to revolt. It'll stop them from going after each other. So this is a stone cold fact. So the knowledge that the white man allowed you to share and read in his prison system, where else did you get your knowledge? Since the white man is so bad. Oh, shit. <clears throat> when it's time to go to the doctor, where are you going? Uh-oh. Your grandpappy's pappy's pappy's didn't have the white boy medical system. So how's the white man so goddamn bad? How? How is he bad, man? So if we, if we, but, so <laughs> this is what we talked about last time, right? My, my thing, I'll be all the way with you until this point, right? So I feel like, I feel like we And we can stop right there and that's the problem. You feel like, you feel like. That's not the, that's not the truth though. Like that's why when Kanye said that slavery was a choice, I agreed with him and did a video on it because no one tells you that you can't homeschool your children. No one tells you that you have to follow the food pyramid that they give you at school. No one tells you to eat McDonald's. No one tells you to have your kids on a fast food diet. No one tells you to put yourself on a fast food diet. No one tells you to drink the alcohol, wake up and crack a beer. No one tells you guys to behave like this. This is completely black people's decisions and our bad decision making has led to us having some of the worst generations of children that we have ever seen the most disrespectful the most violent and this all came from the miseducation of young black men that have now taken over the community and everyone is so scared of them that it's hard to stop the violence when you're scared of the people being violent that is a hundred percent of us thing that's not a them thing now, can I say, if we go back far enough that white folks is the ones who started this? Yes, we could do that. But are we talking about today? Are we talking about the last hundred years or so? No, that was our parents being disobedient to their grandparents and, and trying to live an opposite life of the way that our grandparents lived, even though the way that our grandparents lived built Tulsa, Oklahoma. We had the Hope Movement in Philadelphia. We had another movement in uh, Chicago. We had another one in, in Florida. We had plenty of movements during segregation, during Jim Crow, when we did our best. And that's because we stuck together. And that's because we had families, we had fathers. When that was removed by our choices, now we suffer the consequences of it. We was obviously uh, taught through the white man, learning system, however you, however you word it. But I feel like they didn't teach us what we were supposed to learn. They're not supposed to. They're supposed to keep you dumb like your mama and them dumb because your parents are supposed to teach you. Indoctrination starts in the classroom and everybody know that. Everybody know when your black parents dress you up with them pretty clothes and Michael Jordan tennis shoes at the first of the school year and send you off to school, you are going to be miseducated. miseducated. The miseducation of, of the, the Negro. Negro by Carl. That's what exactly. I'm saying. So we've already been told that this school system miseducated us. Why aren't your parents preparing you for school? Teach. Because when my child, before they got even to the world, I was reading to the belly. 
Facts. Same here. The music that I played for my daughter when she was inside of her mother, I used to take the headphones and play relaxing music in the headphones on her belly all day. I used to read to her in the belly. I would speak to her in the belly all day. And my daughter is super advanced compared to the other two-year-olds that are around because I took that time out to be able to invest into her. And that's what we all need to do. We need to homeschool. That's why I'm so big on homeschooling your children because 90% of the shit they teach you in school, you will never use again. Before my child, I I'll let this continue. When that baby was in the room, boy, I was reading a mijo in the belly. Mm. So I noticed when he came out, nigga, he was way advanced than other kids. Nigga, I was reading to him when he was in the belly. Mm. He was hearing music in the belly. I was already cultivating the kid in the belly, the womb of the woman. So I wasn't gonna rely on the school system. So when he got to school, he wasn't interested in school at all. And I told him, listen, son, school is just a white man game and it's ran good. Learn how to socialize. I don't care about an mm -hmm. F, I don't care about a D. Don't cause your citizenship, your behavior means everything to me at school, nigga. Everything. I talk, I talk my son into dropping out, nigga, in the seventh grade. Life taught him he needed to get back in school. I told him, nigga, ain't nothing wrong with being a dumb mechanic. Mm. Do you know how to read, write, add, and subtract? That's all your ancestors knew how to do. Fuck school. But you end up graduating. He didn't learn shit at school. Mm. Nigga, he was taught at home. When he got in trouble, I gave him books to read. Mm -hmm. When he got in trouble, I gave him books that I wanted him to read mm -hmm. and write me a report, nigga. Mm -hmm. See, at first, when he was in pre-K and kindergarten, I started out real disciplined, real hard for making behavior, wrong choices. I didn't give a fuck about that white boy education. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about that white boy testing methods and what his grades say by mile, man. All I care about is how you behave, nigga. Because your behavior is a reflection of you, not that white boy book system. You go forget everything he teaching you. Mm -hmm. Facts. So that's what I'm saying, mm -hmm. nigga. So and that's why they come out with shows like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Are you smarter than a fourth grader? Because they know that once you're an adult and you leave those learning facilities, none of that shit that they taught you is, is dope enough that you have to carry it into the future. Unless you're going to be an architect and you need to know geometry and these other kinds of math, then uh, most of these things will never play a factor in your life ever again. Never. We don't remember 90% of the shit that they taught us in school outside of reading, writing, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, uh, j just the basics. And those basics get you the fundamental knowledge that you need to go into any field that you want to afterwards. That's why I say that we should homeschool then send our kids to trade school. After trade school, we could get them into any field that we need to go. And those jobs are pandemic proof. And they're the highest paying jobs that you get out of trade school. Or you could go to college, wind up, $80,000 in debt and overqualified to work in the field that you got your degree in. Your choice. How can you blame the white man for not teaching you? He ain't supposed to teach you. Black folks is supposed to teach you. You're really supposed to be homeschooled. Teach. But don't nobody love you enough or love your education. I'm, I'm not going to say that. Don't nobody love or value your education enough to homeschool you. They love you to death but they don't value education enough to homeschool you. And plus it's a comfort, it's an it's a, it's a inconvenience, it's a sacrifice that a parent has to make to wake up every day and homeschool and teach their own kids mm -hmm. to where it's a benefit of their educational system. Mm -hmm. Most parents will throw the towel in. School is really a daycare system for parents. Oh, I can't wait for y'all to go back to school. Oh, I'm sorry, but God damn he cooking. God damn he cooking. It's a 12 year babysitting program. A 12 year babysitting program where they keep your child for 13 years actually, pre-K to 12th grade, 13 years of just being babysat. You just sit in this classroom and listen to this boring ass information that has nothing to do with what you actually have your mind on. There's no reason there's no barbershop classes in our, in our middle and high schools. There's no reason that we don't have no technology classes. There's no reason that we don't have a way for kids to be able to venture off and get into their trades early. Instead, they want to keep you in a babysitting program. And most parents... Most parents do not want to take the time out. Yo, and I'm not going to lie to you, it sucks waking up every morning and having to homeschool my son. It gets a little frustrating when you can see his attention span starting to, starting to waver a little bit. And on those days, I just cut him a break where the school won't cut him a break. So I know some days his mind just ain't there. 
I know I know some days he's just tired. I know some days I've worked him so hard over the last three days that I got to give him a break. The school doesn't see it the same way. Bang, you can't retain bang, information bang, when it's getting beaten to you every day. You need a couple of days to detox and actually process the information. So I might teach him something for two or three days straight, and then we'll do hands-on for two or three days straight. Then I'll go back to teaching for two or three days straight, and then we hands-on for two or three days straight. That's the way that it needs to be done. But since I homeschool, I have the ability to control the curriculum for my children. And I think that we all need to do that. And then we can stop complaining and we can really like because the Jews send their kids to the Hebrew Academy where they learn the real shit. They're not learning the same thing you're learning in your public high schools. They're not learning the same things you're learning in your middle schools. That's why they're so advanced, because they basically homeschool their children by giving them the curriculum that they want. Facts. He's cooking. I can't wait for y'all because it's really a daycare system. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying if black people think white folks so bad, why are you not educating your own kids? Oh, why you let them go choice. from pre-K to the 12th grade, getting that white boy food school? You already know, niggas, I already been proven that the food that they serve in public Ooh. school, if not at the same level of prison food. and jail food, and just right above dog food. The same companies that deliver the food to the prisons are the same companies that deliver the food to your schools. And if there's a direct correlation between what you eat and the way you think. Show me an area where the food is terrible, and I'll show you an area with some of the most violent and crazy people that you're gonna find. Show me an area where the food is healthier, where they're raising their own chickens, where they have their own cows, where they have their own goats, where they're growing their own foods. And I'll show you a much healthier environment. Take India, for instance, where they have people growing their own food. Fine. Uh, I'll check during the pandemic. Most of the places in Africa that didn't have access to hospitals and everything suffered from it the least. You know why? Because food. It's something we leave out so often. And just because I'm vegan, sometimes I'm iffy on teaching about food because most people are thinking that I'm just trying to convert them into being vegan. I'm not one of those kind of guys. I'm not going to be standing in front of McDonald's saying that eating a burger is slavery. I'm not going to be one of those guys. But I know that if you want to damage your people, you damage them with the food. Something that they can't go without. You damage them with the water. And the schools don't teach you this. But you don't never, your kids don't never pack a lunch. Mm. Man, y'all miss me with that shit, homie. Y'all nigga motherfuckers just be talking. Just be talking. And, and play rap music the whole time to the school. Ooh. What? And wake the kids up saying, get y'all ass up. Woo. I'm running, come on, get waking up fussing and hollering. Ever since my son was a baby, I'd sit next to him and I'd be like, hey, Mr. Boss, baby. Hey, Mr. Boss Baby, you got to get up and go to work because he loved Boss Baby. And I'm like, you see how much Boss Baby work? You see the suits that he likes to wear? You see the suitcase? You see him waking up to get to work? I need you to have that same kind of work ethic. So he wakes up with a smile. He wakes up ready to go. And then I give him a little bit of time to sit back and just let, let the wake up soak in. You can't do that if you're running late and got to get your kids off the school. You don't have that same luxury. And this is why homeschooling is so important. Not waking, hey y'all, come on, breathe in life. So, man, don't tell me about what's fucking us up, nigga, when we know everything that's been harming us, but we ain't doing nothing to counter it. We got all these books, the message, we got all this information when we was Hebrew. Why we ain't, ain't got no counter to attack the war on us then? Mm -hmm. Why we got drill music? Why, nigga, why? steady kid? Why we ain't, nigga, we ain't got one nigga. My son has no idea what drill music is. My son has no idea who most of the ignorant rappers are. And at some points I feel bad because if he was around other kids, he may not be able to process the information that they're trying to give him. But I'm also glad that he can't process the information that they're trying to give him because most of it is ignorance. And I'm going to stop it right there because after that he started going a little bit crazy and I'm going to have to edit out so much of it that you guys aren't even going to be able to hear the conversation. But you guys could go over to DJU and watch the rest of this interview. It was super powerful. If you have the ability, if you're in a two-parent household, if one of y'all going to be home, we need to do better at homeschool and our children and keeping them closer to us because if they spend eight hours a day with the school two hours a day with the after school program that's 10 hours a day that they're not around us we get them for an hour or two then they go to bed wake up rinse repeat who are they going to learn to have more respect for if you take a phone or, or the tablet from your child they get an attitude when a teacher takes the phone or tablet from the child they just accept it because they've built more respect 
for the teachers over time than they have their own goddamn parents because they spend more time with them. No way they should be spending more time with random people than they spend with their goddamn parents. And they do it for 13 years. So your child is completely brainwashed by the time you get to them. Think of most of the negative stuff you learned. You learned it at school around people who your mama didn't want you around anyway. You could not bring those friends to your house afterwards with their pants sagging, bandanas on. You guys couldn't bring those people to your mama's house. And if you could, then that's another fucking problem that we're not vetting who our children are becoming friends with. We're not forcing our children to become friends with better people by dropping them off in better areas, more conducive environments. We're not even thinking like that. Our children do ignorant shit and we laugh and record it. I just seen a woman the other day. I'll put the picture up. I just seen a woman the other day post a picture with her kids and there was a teenager in the, in, in the picture with, with the Glock hanging out of his pocket. With the Glock hanging out of his pocket throwing up gang signs. And entirely too often I see this. Men on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube taking pictures with their kids, throwing up gang signs, all sorts of fuck shit. That is a no-go. These same people will tell me that it's the white man, though. These same people will tell me it's the system. And I'll be the same nigga to say, no, nigga, it's you. It's you. It's the way you choose to be a parent. It's the way you choose to be a mother. The way you choose to be a father. The way your discipline wavers if her butt is fat enough. The way your discipline wavers if she has a tight enough outfit on. Now you wind up with a baby mama you want nothing to do with and you leave her to raise these goddamn boys that she can't control. She could pop him when he's little, but by the time he's nine and he's bigger than her and weighs more than her, there's nothing she could do with him anymore and, she, and he has no fear for her. The fear comes from you, and it's okay to have your children have a little bit of fear about their father. Like my son, no, it's no games to be played. You're not going to disrespect nothing around me, or you're going to have to deal with me. That's what it is. We got to stop being so soft with these fucking children. We got to stop being so friendly with these children. We have to take over the education of our children. And if we don't, then don't come to me complaining about no white man doing a goddamn thing because you did this. Man, we're going to keep coming back with more powerful conversations like this. No, I'm not going to react to the video of him pulling the blick out and doing all of that other stunt shit. I don't have time for that. I'm here to empower. I'm here to get to the young men. I'm here to show them that it's some of us that are cheering you on for all the greatness that you're doing. It's some of us that want to push you in the right direction. We don't want you out here spinning the block. We don't want you out here with the 30 on you illegally. Because I, I, I love guns like the next man. But I don't want you riding around with no illegal firearms, catching charges at an age where you should have had a legal firearm. You need to be taught better. You need to be educated better by somebody who lived the same life that I'm trying to get you to avoid. So you guys like, subscribe, comment, share this video with some of the young men out there. Plenty more to come. You already know. Peace.